It is no doubt that our BC education system faces a crisis. In 2002, birth rates in BC hit an all-time low, along with slowed migration rates. This has contributed to the region's lowest population growth since 1986. Also, a tough job market for young adults may have also contributed to a delay in childbearing. So in the next decade, more than 77% of the jobs are going to require some post-secondary education. The Ministry of Regional Economic Skills Development reported that in the coming decade, the number of jobs are going to exceed the number of young people by half a million. So therefore, post-secondary institutions really need to look at those, the, non, the traditional learning methods of uh, looking at high school 18 to 24 year old graduates. And one of the ways is to really recognize that there are non-traditional learners that are out there and those of previously underserved populations. These populations can come from BC, Canada, or all over the world. There are several post-secondary institutions that are already looking at the post-secondary um, non-traditional learning model. Many of them are looking at online learning, and there are several advantages to that. One of them is that it's asynchronous. Another is that there's a learning team component, so you can interact with others. Also, you can log in from anywhere in the world. Not only can you log in from anywhere in the world, you can be from anywhere in the world. There's also a component where students can feel safe to interact with others because if you fear public speaking, basically you're discussing online. And the lectures and the participation and the discussions occur at the learner's convenience. While there are advantages to the online learning model, there are also challenges that exist as well. For one, most post-secondary institutions have not fully utilized the virtual capacities in which the technology world has to offer. Secondly, while there's this flexibility in online learning, which is any time, any place, and at any pace, many students don't have the maturity and the ability to be self-directed learners. Also, a lot of students feel a sense of disconnect because when they're not working face-to-face -face with an instructor or with their peers, they feel that they lose the motivation or the drive to be able to continue on in their studies. And also, as we know, technology is advancing so rapidly so institutions are constantly playing catch-up. So where does BC stand in all this? Well, most post-secondary institutions, as we know, are looking at the traditional brick-and-mortar style of learning, where students um, go, into, go on campus on ground. And now there's um, blended forms as well, where some of the work is required on campus and some of the work is required online. However, in recognition of this, initiatives are still being put in place to look at those non-traditional learning models. In 1996, the ministry had reported and created a strategic plan asking post-secondary institutions to look at multi-generational blending, multicultural diversity, the increasing population of students with disabilities, and those who are part-time learners. Where post-secondary institutions have really capitalized is by recruiting international learners. The, the recruitment of international learners has been huge. For one, there is an economic contribution of $1.8 billion annually. It creates over 21,000 jobs. And as of 2010, a total of 94,000 international learners have taken the opportunity to come to Canada, and BC especially, and taken a course or a program online, or sorry, on ground. And it creates $66 million in government um, revenue annually. So how do we, when we see that there is declining population in BC, how do post-secondary institutions, or this province, and especially the Centre of Excellence, this building that we are sitting in today, how can we capitalize on these international learners? We've talked about sustainability today. Dr. Andrew Hay talked about moving sustainability forward. And since sustainability is a new emerging field, one of the things that I propose is that we really work together as post-secondary institutions and high schools working together and having a partnership. And this partnership would be very interesting because secondary schools right now are tapping into something called distributed learning, which is DL. And as of four years ago, 85,000 BC high school students have looked at and have taken a course in a DL environment, which is pretty amazing when we have 285,000 BC students, high school students. In this partnership, what would happen is that the secondary school's DL programs would be responsible for, for providing the preparatory courses for a program on, for example, sustainable construction management, 
that will be offered here at the Center of Excellence. What do these preparatory courses look like? Well, for example, let's just say that for this program, students need to have some elements of principles of mathematics, some elements of calculus, and some elements of apprenticeship and workplace math. Instead of these students having to take all three of the courses but not needing to know all of the stuff in all three of those courses, we can create one course in a DL program which has all the requirements that are necessary and the students can gain credits for that. It's pretty empowering. In addition to that, we can also start providing the preparatory work on sustainability. Sustainability is an area where BC secondary schools can tap into now. If we know we can do this here, why not start it at a younger age? And also, international learners, they require the language skills. So embedded into this curriculum, where there will be the preparatory courses, secondary schools can also embed a curriculum on students being able to acquire the language skills as well. So the model looks like this. A secondary school distributed learning program would provide the preparatory courses, the language skills, and start to offer some courses on sustainability so students have the background knowledge to enter into a program like sustainability at the Center of Excellence. On the right-hand side of the model, international students would then come to the Okanagan and enroll into an on-ground program or a blended program. On the left-hand side, what else, we, what else we could do is have the international student enroll in their home country and actually enroll in an online program. And that's the model that I want to look at. So, what does a program on sustainability for an international learner who wants to stay in their home country look like? So, since secondary schools are going to be responsible for offering these courses online to these international learners, these students will already be accustomed to the online learning model. In addition to that, and why should we be doing this, first of all? It's because Okanagan College can serve the bigger pool of learners, of those international learners who have to stay in their home country for whatever reason it is, and they just cannot come here. So how do we reach out to them? We can reach out by going online. What would make Okanagan College different from all those other post-secondary institutions that are already out there doing online learning is that we can offer virtual labs. So for example, the Okanagan College facilitator would be doing the lab here and these students would actually be face to face and in real time so that they can actually ask questions to their instructors and they can talk to their peers in addition to the anytime, any place and at any place model. So we're actually fusing face to face, which is missing right now in many of the online um, institutions that are, are, are using the online forum. In addition to that, we can offer passion projects. Passion projects are different from cumulative projects. Because in a passion project, what would happen is that these students, these international students, would develop the idea and then they would work in the years that they would have before they actually graduate with a diploma and they would actually take this project and they would put it into their community and it would be visual for people to see. And this would be with the help of an expert that's already in the field doing some of this work. So an example of such a project would be like this. Wouldn't it be amazing to see a project like this already out there and say that I did this in school and it's actually being implemented right now and it's in my home community? If this was the case, then we would be the leading institution in virtual learning models and in the online delivery format of learning. And then what happens is we move away from the student-teacher model where students can often be passive recipients of information and the teachers are the ones or the facilitators that are you know, responsible for the assessment, the evaluation, the building of the curriculum, having to develop the passion projects and all the demands that it requires to be a good instructor. And we can move towards a teacher-student expert model. And in the teacher-student expert model, the experts would be the ones who would form partnerships with the Okanagan College 
and they would be the ones who would help facilitate and pursue these passion projects for these international learners. They would help them implement it in their communities. They would be, for example, the green building contractors or the renewable energy company experts. They would be the ones who would be the subject matter in the field where these students can go to when they need assistance and help on these passion projects or whatever it may be in this program. The growth of online learning will become exponential in the next four to five years, and it only makes sense for us to tap into that now and have a competitive advantage. What we're seeing is a declining enrollment in BC, and that's happening in both sectors of education, in secondary schools, and we're seeing it in the post-secondary institutions as well. So if we work together, then everybody wins. The students, the international students, will have access to an education system here, the Center of Excellence. We're giving this to the world if we offer this online um, component. And these students will have developed these passion projects and they will be out there in the communities. And then what happens is when these passion projects are out there, other people will go around saying, wow, where did this come from? How did you do this? What school did you go to? And it becomes a marketing strategy. We're creating innovative thinkers by providing them with a broad global perspective. We're also allowing international learners to acquire the language skills, the Canadian credentials, and the Canadian culture. And I think we all know that the Canadian credentials can go a long way. And of course, most importantly, the Okanagan College Centre of Excellence can significantly increase its student population without ever having to increase the physical size of its geographical location. And that's something to think about. Thank you.